Hi, my name is Dan Greenwood. I'm a brand specialist at Alpine Electronics, and today we're gonna go over how to install the DVR C320R. Now for today's demonstration, we're gonna be using a 2018 F-150. Now there's a good chance that you don't drive the same vehicle, and that's okay. A lot of what we're gonna be going over in this install will apply to most vehicles, so it should be able to get you on the right track. Now, if at any point during this install you feel like it's a little over your head, that's okay. Check out our dealer locator right here. There's a really good chance there's an Alpine dealer in your area. Reach out to them. They can probably help you out with your install. Now, before we get going, let's go ahead and take everything out of the box and see what it comes with. All right, let's take a look at everything that came in the box. Uh, right up front and center is our main unit itself, the front camera. And as you can see, we do have uh, service mounted buttons on here, as well as an adjustable camera. Now, this is going to come in handy depending on what kind of angle your windshield is. Because the way it's going to mount, let's assume this is your windshield, is it'll just stick right on your windshield and then we can adjust the camera to get you the best view possible. And then all the connections just come out of this one wire on the back and then we'll run that under the headliner, down the A-pillar, and it'll all be tucked away and hidden. And, um, and then you have all access to all your buttons right here. So once we get to the car, we'll get a little closer into that. Right here, we have the rear camera. Now the rear camera can be mounted on the back windshield, uh, hatch area of the car, and be looking out the back windows uh, to cover everything behind your vehicle. Now let's say you're an Uber driver, you can actually mount this camera uh, in the front of the vehicle looking back, and that way you can monitor the inside of your vehicle like anyone who's uh, riding in your car if you wanna keep them on camera just in case. For security reasons, you do have that option. Right next to it is the camera uh, wire, the cable. This is for the rear camera. And there is an extension cable here if you need it for your uh, vehicle. Now, now all of those are gonna connect to this main harness right here, which we're gonna go into in a little more depth in just a second. Right here is a uh, cigarette lighter adapter. Now this is gonna be used if you don't want to uh, use this and hardwire into your vehicle, you can use your cigarette lighter. It will power up your rear camera as well as the uh, front camera. Now, keep in mind, it's only gonna power when your vehicle is on, assuming that's what your cigarette lighter in your car does. Some cars, like some older American cars, do have constant power cigarette lighters, so that means your camera would be on all the time, which might not necessarily be a bad thing, but just depending on how you wanna use your camera, and if you decide to go this route, keep in mind um, to check how your cigarette lighters operate in your car. Now, for today, we are gonna be hardwiring, so we're actually not gonna be using this. And the last thing we have over here is some cable clips. We'll actually, we'll be using these in our install and I'll show you a little application for those later, as well as our user guide, as well as the SD card adapter. So if you wanna take the video files off your camera and put them into your computer uh, and you need an adapter, we do include one for you. So let's go ahead and clear this stuff out of the way and let's dive a little deeper into this harness. All right, taking a closer look at this harness. Uh, it does have a good amount of length on there. So like I said, depending on what kind of vehicle you have and how much you, length you need in your install of the wire, we should have you covered. This end here is actually what's gonna plug into the pigtail coming off of the, your main front camera. And on the other end of this, we're gonna have two different things. One, and I'm just gonna kind of flip it over to show you guys. One side is gonna have the rear camera input. Now, if this reaches your shorter cable that plugs right into your camera and you don't need the extension, that's fine. Uh, it will still work, no problem. Uh, if you, our hard wiring, this is uh, everything you're gonna need right here. So to go over what this has, we do have composite style video and audio out. So if you wanna hook this up to, maybe you have an aftermarket radio with an AV input and you wanna view the video on your from your camera, you can actually plug this in there. Now, if you do have uh, some model Alpine radios, uh, I'm gonna list those on the screen for you right now. Those can actually utilize these connections here and that will actually give you some control of the camera on your screen. Now it's gonna be very limited to what models can use this. And also do keep in mind, if you are using a Maestro interface with that radio, this will take place of that Maestro connection. So do keep that in mind. Now we are not gonna be using these today, so we're not gonna go further into them, but we are gonna be using these. These are your main power connections. So we do have the yellow wire, which is gonna be your constant 12 volt. This is 12 volts that's always on in the car. This is accessory. That means uh, only when the vehicle is on will it have 12 volts. And then your ground, the ground is always there. That's pretty much it with this harness. So uh, let's go ahead and clear this out and I'm gonna show you guys uh, tools and parts you're gonna probably need for your install. 
Okay, in front of me, I have all the tools needed for the install. Uh, so it depends on the vehicle that you're using and what tools you might need, but this is what we're gonna be needing today and should give you a pretty good idea of what's in store for whenever you're doing your install. So we'll start off with the multimeter. This is gonna be very important. We're actually gonna be using this to find out what wires we need to tap into in the vehicle, as well as these little probes here, it just makes it a little bit easier to do. Uh, screwdriver and ratchet. Uh, like I said, it really depends on your vehicle and what's needed to take some panels apart but there's a good chance you'll need something like this, as well as a couple of panel tools. Uh, we have some zip ties that are my favorite thing in the world. And uh, obviously those are gonna be used to secure down whatever slack and cables, uh, that way you don't have just a bunch of wires hanging around in your car. Uh, now for today, we're gonna be soldering our connections. So we do have a soldering iron, some solder and electrical tape. That way we can secure, uh, insulate all of the uh, connections that we make, as well as some flush cut or wire cutters and rubbing alcohol. The rubbing alcohol is actually what we're gonna be used to prep the surface of the windshield and the back window uh, for before we uh, adhere the double-sided tape that comes with the camera. I do recommend using this because it will get whatever kind of grease or anything that's on your surface, so like your windshield. Um, that, would help, that would prohibit double-sided tape from sticking too well. Rubbing alcohol works great at cleaning that off and it makes, your, uh, makes the, uh, the bond of the double-sided tape last a real long time. If you don't have any like this, a good glass cleaner should work just fine. All right, uh, the next step is to go and get the F-150 pulled in here and we'll start taking it apart and get these cameras installed. All right, we got the F-150 in the bay, so let's go ahead and get going on this install. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place the front camera. Now, before we peel the backing from the double-sided tape, we wanna go ahead and kind of figure out where we wanna mount it on the windshield. So let's go ahead and do that now. So. Before you get going, you want to keep in mind where the camera is located uh, on the unit. So it's going to be off to the left side. And you want this camera to be as center in the windshield as possible. A good rule of thumb to know exactly where center is on your windshield is the mount of your rearview mirror is going to be dead center. So we're going to try to get this as close as we can to that mount. Now there's a couple of options that we have here. One is I can line the camera up just below where that mount is. Now. That'll be great, but you know, I actually want the camera to be up a little bit higher on the windshield. Plus I, I don't like it being off center. And if I'm gonna go off center, I'd rather it be kind of hidden by the rearview mirror from my view. So I think I'm actually gonna go a little to the side here. And I think, and that'll look pretty good. And also I can still access the buttons and everything. So I think that's where we're gonna stick it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna clean off the uh, windshield area with some rubbing alcohol and then we'll go ahead and mount this. All right, area's cleaned up. Let's go ahead and peel the backing off. I have my hook wire cutters here, so I'll just use that to get going. If you have fingernails, that'll work too. And before we stick this, we also want to peel the protective film off in front of the camera. If you do fire this thing up and notice that your picture looks a little blue, probably because you left the film on there. There's also some right here. It's a very satisfying peel and then over the buttons. All right, let's get this thing mounted. Now, whenever you mount this, you wanna make sure that you have it as square as possible. If you have it rotated like this, it will mess up your, your picture will be a little crooked. So you wanna make sure to have it as level with the horizon as possible. All right, once you have it there, give it some good firm presses. And keep in mind that you'll end up probably rotating your camera to get a better view in front. Um, right now I'm going to leave it and once we get it all powered up and we fire up the app and take a look at the picture Then we'll know exactly where to aim the camera. So let's go ahead and get this cable tucked This is pretty simple in this vehicle because the headliner is pretty easy to move down out of the way Now I do have this little antenna here uh, From our aftermarket alarm, so I, I got to go around this Sometimes it's hard to get your headliner moved down with you. I use a pry tool just to kind of get it moved a little bit but I normally try to do this by hand as much as I can. There we go. All right. Now there's a harness right here. I'm gonna go ahead, um, that's coming from the factory mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and put a zip tie right here just to keep the cables nice and tidy. Okay, and we'll cut off the access. And I'm gonna get this antenna 
and microphone back to where they were. All right, we got the cable uh, up in the headliner right here. So we're just gonna continue tucking it to the top of the A-pillar over here. Now we are gonna go down the uh, passenger side of this truck. And the reason why is because I know that I can get power and accessory uh, down in the kick panel over here. Now your vehicle might be different. You might have to run it down the driver's side to get your power. So just be wary of that, depending on the, where you grab your power from. I've worked on a lot of F-150s, so I just know I can get it over there. So whenever um, you run your wire, just always have a plan of how you're gonna route your cables and what direction you wanna go. And we're gonna do the same on the rear camera. We're also gonna go up the passenger side since we're gonna do everything over there. And uh, so that'll be our next step. So let's go ahead and head to the back of the truck and we'll get the rear camera mounted and the, uh, the cable ran forward. So we're in the back of the truck here and we're gonna go ahead and figure out where we wanna mount this rear camera. Now, the first thing I notice is we have a motorized sliding rear window and we want to make sure not to stick our camera on this window because once we move it, the cable will get snagged. So we wanna make sure to keep it clear. Now, you might have to get a little clever and it all, like I said before, this is on this tr particular truck. Whatever you're driving could be very different. You can probably just stick it to the rear brake light inside the rear headliner and you're good. Just really depends on what you have. Now, what I came up with for the solution here is I actually made a little bracket out of ABS and I actually put a couple of the cable clips on here that came with the, uh, our camera and that would help cable manage the wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna stick this guy here and then our camera will stick onto this with our mount. Now one thing to keep in mind is our camera does have a label named to on top to make sure that face is up. And we're just gonna stick it on here and wind the lens up with the center of the back window. We'll go ahead and get you a shot of what that looks like right now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick my camera to my mount that I made here. And now I'm gonna peel the backing off my double-sided tape I put on my bracket. And now uh, make sure you peel the film, the protective film off the lens before you put this in. It makes it, <laughs> that way you don't uh, have to reach back there later. And then we're just gonna go ahead and stick it on and we're gonna try to have the lens be as centered in the, in the vehicle as possible. All right, pretty happy with that. So uh, now uh, next step is uh, we're gonna go get the cable and uh, we're gonna go ahead and tuck it in the headliner and run it up the passenger side since we uh, took that side apart earlier. When you tuck a cable up in the headliner, um, you wanna just kinda use your fingertips and just kinda get it over the lip. You don't want to bend the headliner too much because it can buckle and it will cause it make a crease. You definitely want to avoid that. All right, the, uh, the D pillar here is real simple. We're just tucking the cable behind it. Um, and then uh, we'll pull down the weather stripping here. And this is where you'll see an airbag right here. Now we want to make sure that your cable never goes in front of the airbag. You always want to be behind it. I know the airbag sounds really scary and it can be very scary, but as long as you run your cable accordingly and safely, it's not a problem. Now in your vehicle, when you're running around any of these pillars, if it's too tight or you can't get the cable in there, you might have to remove the panel. And luckily in this truck, I don't need to, so I'm just tucking it in. All right, so now we have the camera wire from the rear ran up here to the front. Uh, as you can see, the cable's not gonna quite reach everything, but it looks like we don't need that extension harness uh, because on here, on the main harness itself, there is plenty of slack, so we can easily get the rear camera hooked up. So I'm gonna get this unwound. And I'm also gonna separate out the rear camera input. and have both of these right here. So first things first, just like we talked about before, we wanna make sure we're behind this airbag. So I'm gonna run this cable, which is going to the rear camera, just behind the airbag right here. Like I said, normally in these cars, there's a lot of slack up here. Just be very careful. There we go. So now we're just gonna plug it in and then we can just tuck it up here, right behind the airbag. 
And then we'll go ahead and put the weather stripping back. Now we'll take our other main harness here and just plug it into the camera. And now we can run both these cables down the A-pillar and into the side of the dash together and keep all the slack over here. So as you guys can see, we actually have a factory harness here. So what we're gonna do is zip tie the uh, harness to the factory wire. What's nice about doing it this way is we're uh, separated from the airbag, so uh, we don't have, so we know that we're not blocking the airbag. So if there is uh, any ever an accident with this vehicle, we know the wiring is not going to cause any problems. So now we'll just tuck the cable down here. There's actually a little clip here. We'll just go ahead and use that. And now all of our all of our slack is right here in the uh, side of the dash. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of bundle it up, zip tie it down. And then um, we'll make sure, and then we'll have the uh, main power connections. We'll have these down in the kick, and then we're gonna head down there and uh, make our connections. So let's go ahead and get this secured up in the dash. And as you guys can see, it's pretty simple to do, to zip tie it down. Cool, now we're set. So let's go ahead and make our power connections. All right, we are in the home stretch here. So we're just gonna find our ground point. We're gonna find a constant and we're gonna find an accessory. And of course, like I mentioned before, the way we're gonna do that is with our multimeter. Now I've already kind of probed around a little bit over here in the kick panel, and I've already found a uh, constant wire that's actually a pretty heavy gauge cable. And uh, we'll get you a close up shot of that right here, as well as an accessory wire. And I've already tested them. So with the vehicle off and my meter hooked up to the constant and my, uh, and I'm actually using the factory ground terminal here, which we'll go ahead and just ground the camera there as well. I, already, I had, do have 12 volts with the truck off. If I move the meter over to the accessory connection, you'll see that we actually do have accessory once we turn the truck on. So we found our cables and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna strip back a little bit of the uh, jacketing and we will make our connections. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna solder them, tape them up, make them nice and secure. And before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect the negative terminal of the battery before we make these connections. That way we don't risk any potential damage to anything. And uh, we uh, didn't want to disconnect that now until now because we wanted to test everything before, and we need the battery hooked up to test these connections. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we have our battery disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and make our connections here under the dash. Well, as you can see here, we went ahead and made our connection on our factory ground bolt here. So whenever you do that, just make sure that you secure it down nice and tight when you're done. Now, if you don't have a bolt here, this is a good area where you can go ahead and make your ground. So you can actually use a self-tapping screw. Just be sure to save down some of the paint to make a good solid ground connection and then screw it down there. If you don't have the, uh, if you don't have that factory ground point, that's what I would do. But if you do have a factory ground point, I would recommend using a factory ground. That way you don't even have to make an extra hole, any extra holes in your car. So next step we're, is we're gonna connect the accessory wire. So we'll start by stripping back the uh, jacket on the uh, sleeving, and then we're going to use a pick tool. And I, uh, I normally just poke through the copper strands and then just poke the wire through the strands and wrap it around. And then uh, just solder the connection. Now when you're done soldering, now if you end up with a sharp point from the solder, uh, I get some flush cuts and just cut that down. That way, whenever you tape up the wire, it's not gonna poke through. So uh, once the solder joint cools down, go ahead and wrap it up with tape. And then uh, here's a little more of a closer up shot here of the uh, constant connection. So as you can see, we'll strip the wire back. And then I'll do my poke through uh, with my pick tool. And then I'm going to poke the constant wire through after I kind of twist the strands together to make it nice and uh, tight and then wrap it around the cable and then solder the connection. And then once again, you'll see that there is a little sharp point. So we'll cut that off. And then once the solder cools, we'll tape up the connection and then we're done. All right, cool. Now we're done with that. So our next step is going to be securing the cables down. I normally try to keep the fuse holders uh, a little more accessible in the kick panel, just in case we ever have to get to them. We don't have to pull the running board out. We can just pop the kick out and they're right there. So we're gonna use some zip ties and we'll secure down all of our slack. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the battery 
and make sure that everything's working like it should. All right, so we have everything hooked up. I have went ahead and tested everything to make sure everything powers up and we're all good. So the truck is put all back together. Now we're ready to go ahead and start setting up the camera through the app. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go and wanna obviously turn on the vehicle, which I've already done. And uh, I'll actually have the engine running, that way I don't have to worry about it automatically shutting off on me or anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit the Wi-Fi button on the back of the camera. Find your smartphone, connect to a Wi-Fi network. So it'll tell you to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, so I'm on my Wi-Fi settings right now. I'm just gonna wait for it to pop up. There it is. Now I've already connected to it before, but when it prompts you for a password, the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll show you how to change that. So now we're connected. Next thing we're gonna want is the Alpine Recording Viewer app. So this is what it's gonna look like in the App Store. Or if you're on Google Play, it's gonna be the same thing. I already have it, so let's open up the app. And we're gonna connect to the camera by just tapping the red banner at the bottom, saying where your dash cam is, disconnect, is required. So now we're connected. So in the app, we can uh, see several things. First off, we can uh, take a look at the connection settings in the bottom right. And in here is where we can change the name of the camera on the Wi-Fi as well as your password so you can make it more secure. Dashcam info is going to show us our model number, firmware version, every, and uh, status of GPS and your uh, SD card formatting and everything like that. Uh, so uh, if, you, if there's a firmware update and you want to make sure you have the newest one, this is where you can check that. Under file list, this is where you can actually view your saved files uh, from recordings from the camera. And it's going to be broken down by categories for continuous recording, if it records motion, and, uh, any kind of uh, manual recording, anything like that. This is where they are going to be. Uh, dash cam settings. We're going to go and go through that now. Uh, right away, you'll see memory card settings, and this is where you can format your SD card, as well as uh, tell what kind of uh, uh, priority you want as far as when it's um, automatically recording over old files uh, so you can change that to parking manual whatever you want whatever's more important to you under uh, camera settings this is where you can change the brightness of the uh, of the li front lighting um, I just leave it on mid uh, record settings uh, so this is where uh, you can enable or disable your voice recording there's a button on the uh, front of the unit itself that allows you to input a manual voice recording um, also, you can tell it uh, incident mode recording sensitivity. So if, it feel, if you feel like uh, you need a little more sensitivity for whenever there's any kind of, inst uh, any kind of impact on the vehicle to make a, a tag for the video file, you can change the sensitivity right here. As well as super night vision, uh, which enhances a lot of the, uh, it makes the, the image much brighter. This is better for parking mode when you don't have your headlights on. Uh, but you can play around with this. If your vehicle's headlights are not very bright, maybe this can help you out at night. Uh, this is where you enable disable HDR. I would recommend leaving it enabled. This is where you can enable parking mode. Uh, and in parking mode, you have different options. You can do time lapse or uh, energy saving or just motion detection. If it detects you know walking by, it would just only record that. Um, so the uh, and then of course you can change your impact sensitivity, motion sensitivity, everything like that for parking mode as well as uh, the timer if you decide to go that route, as well as your battery voltage protection. So when you're in continuous and parking mode, uh, if you reach your battery reaches a certain uh, voltage and you don't want it to record anymore to save your battery, it'll automatically shut off once it hits that voltage. And you can even tell it during winter months, hey, don't, you don't record during these months because your battery is going to be a little more susceptible during colder weather. So you can uh, tell what months you don't want it to do that as well. Uh, going back to uh, Going back to uh, road safety settings, this is gonna be a little more unique uh, features to this camera. So in here, uh, you can tell it uh, to notify you for safety cameras or mo mobile zone alerts, it's up to you there. Uh, now under uh, ADAS features, so this is where you can, uh, it's gonna do like the lane departure warning, front collision warning, rear collision warning. Um, you can do initialization. Now read the manual on this part, but what you're gonna want, and we'll show you a second um, where you line the camera up with your hood and then you do an initialize and then you drive the vehicle so it'll it'll kind of calibrate itself um, that's what that initializes for 
Uh, lane departure warning, you can tell, you can adjust sensitivity or turn it off, uh, as well as what type, what kind of speed you want it to be. So if you really want only those kind of warnings on the highway, you can tell it low and only at 65 miles an hour. Uh, it's up to you. For front collision warning, uh, you can also adjust sensitivity of that. Back collision warning, that's gonna alert you uh, for anything coming up from behind and it's gonna be rated by speed. Uh, so anything from 30 miles per hour up or you can adjust that as well. And then uh, ve front vehicle departure warning. This one's pretty cool. So if you leave that enabled, uh, if you're at a stoplight and you're not paying attention and then light turns green and the vehicle in front of you goes, it'll actually let you know, hey, the vehicle in front of you is gone, it's time to go. So you're not sitting there um, holding up traffic. So that's a pretty nice feature. And then there's volume levels for all those, uh, for all those settings here. And then going back to system settings, uh, this is where you tell it what language, what kind of volume you want uh, for all the spoken languages. Security LED on the front, that is a little blue striped LED on the front of the uh, camera. So from the outside, you can see that it's recording. Uh, this is where you tell it time zone, if you observe daylight savings, uh, what type of speed you need to use, and then uh, if you want to have a speed stamp in your video recording. That's pretty much it for settings. Now let's go over to live view. So all right, so in live view, uh, this is where we can actually make uh, double check the alignment of the camera. So when we tap the screen towards the top right, you'll see this little uh, grid square icon right next to the microphone. That gives you the blue and green lines. Uh, the green line you're gonna want as close to the edge of the hood as possible. I've actually already got it aligned as far, as close as I can get the camera to, uh, to get me there. Now, now my blue line is gonna be a little off to the right. Now, if you remember before, I did compromise with how I put the camera. I did have it a little off to the side, so you do see that in the recording. Um, like I said, you do want your lens as close to the middle of the vehicle as possible. Um, this is really close, so I should be okay. Now you can also uh, turn those grids off and then uh, if you tap the R, that'll be your rear camera. And it's uh, kind of dark on the right side of my driveway, but as you can see, the rear camera is looking through a very tinted window right now. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and button all this up and we'll go for a test drive and I will take uh, the video footage that records from the front and rear camera and put it into the video so you guys can see what the footage from this camera looks like. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at our tech support at 1-800-TECH-101 or feel free to check out our knowledge base at kb.alpine-usa.com. You can also find one of the local Alpine authorized retailers in your area by going to alpine-usa.com forward slash stores. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If it was helpful in any way, please feel free to drop it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our Alpine TV YouTube channel. We have more videos like this and more coming in the future. So thank you for choosing Alpine. We'll see you next time.